I think for me it was it was uh, reading the book and, and and listening to what really resonated for me. And for me, it was the discussion on education, um, because especially today, everyone is so concerned about the, the way we educate our children, the style in which children are educated, uh, how, we're all kind of, how we're all kind of uh, worrying about the kind of schools we can get our children into. Now, the, and, and the thing is about serving love, it's, it's talking about uh, a radical form of education where we, where in, in the school they treat, they treat children differently. They try to get the children involved in the decision making of the school, in the way they're educated, um, giving children responsibility, looking beyond um, the, the education and, uh, and to how to send children out into the wider society to participate in, in the decision making in society. And I think, I think that's what fascinated me. It's what made, made me really excited about the book. And, and for me, it was to be able to encompass all those different um, things and put them into the play. Well, again, it's, it's, it's listening to the emotion to the piece, um, listening to the characters. Uh, obviously, you, 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 you start off with, with the, the character of Rick because he's our main protagonist. But then you start thinking, OK, well, who's going to be playing against him? Who's going to be playing with him? And then you start looking at the other characters and where the story is. So it's Rick, the classroom, the people he's working with, the headmaster as well, especially because he's the one who is advocating this style of education. And uh, so you know there's going to be uh, a friction between those two people because, because of Rick's inexperience and also his own theories on education is going to rub up against each other. So automatically you're, you're beginning to build action uh, and, and you kind of go through the whole um, play like that. I don't think it, it gives you any limitations at all because because it's theatre, you've got a you can tell stories. Um, in, in, in film, it's it's constantly you're being told to show me all the time, show me, don't tell me, show me. Whereas in theatre, you get to tell. So if you need a character to really express himself, you can give him a very long speech. Um, it's it's not a naturalistic form. It's a heightened it's heightened naturalism in theatre, so you can get away with a lot more. Um, and you can actually, in many ways, you can tell a, you can, it's a better storytelling device because you are allowed to play around with words. You are allowed to take your time and discover characters and discover the situations. Whereas in film nowadays, everything's just flashing up all the time. For me, it's, it's getting down the theories of the education because it's to do that you have to go through a whole process of writing down very large speeches so uh, and, and basically once you know you've got what you want to say I mean which is now and now and now it's the time to start cutting those speeches down to the bare essentials but still retaining the idea of the theories behind the education because it's this you know it's 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 difficult to have two people arguing about education. It's not the most, because um, the theories they're, in, they're talking about, it's not the most engaging, but you have to find the drama in it and the action in it. So that's, it's all about uh, um, trimming the speeches down now to the barest essential. It's fantastic because it's, it's, it's it's what you need as a writer. You, you can't just go, okay, here's a play, it's finished, rehearse it and do it. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Uh, it's, uh, it's an organic process. I've been working on it for a year. I've been delivering, I think I did about three drafts and other people have made comments on those drafts, the producers. And now, but once it gets into a rehearsal room and actors start working on it and mouthing the words and you're hearing the structure of sentences and scenes and what was right in my head certainly isn't right anymore, so that's when you have to start, it's, you know, I have to start changing things. Script was in a really great state to begin with, so um, 
When we worked together before, we had the luxury of um, three or four days with um, some actors uh, at the Lowry, um, where we interrogated, investigated the play, but I could really hear the rhythm of the overall rhythm of the story. And I, that process revealed that there were two or three beats missing from the story, so he wrote additional scenes and he took out some stuff. Uh, we haven't had this process this time. Um, so this week's been slightly different in our uh, w w working together. In so far as uh, I have been a sort of quiet presence in the, in the room, and really, I think after the first read through, when he when this was only the first time he'd heard the play um, read through, that um, he knew it needed to be cut and trimmed. Although one's instinct before the read through is that probably needs to be cut. But I'm I'm although I can offer cuts and offer th at the end of the day you want that the authenticity of the writer's voice to be in charge of that and. Sometimes when my instinct is to trim something, quite often it's because I've not fully understood why that's there. Uh, and that's why when you rehearse a new play, you know, it is harder really because you are really interrogating it for the first time. It's never been done before. So there is no history for it behind it. Just sit down and write. You don't need a computer, you don't need a typewriter, you need a pen and a piece of paper, an idea. 